Hello and welcome to Harmoniously Podcast. Today with us we have Julie. So, yes. So thank you for being with us. And Julie is an amazing coach. She coaches women to find inner peace. So that's such an interesting subject and so much more. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. We're just introducing or start this podcast as usual with uh, our tune in. So I invite everyone and I invite you to just close your eyes. If you can close your eyes, close your eyes and start to focus on your breath. And just allow yourself to be arriving to this moment. Allow yourself to arriving to the here and the now. Allow yourself to find your center. Allow yourself to leave out all the worries, anything that is not important in the now. And just focus on your breath. And then slowly, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back. Mm. So thank you. And tell us more about what amazing things you're doing. Mm, thank you. First of all, I'm honored to be here today speaking with you. And Thanks. yeah, so I'm a coach for women. I help women come home to inner peace. And there's a lot that's attached to that. Um, just to mention a few, it's timeline healing and child work, somatic embodiment. Um, and part of my methodology is I help women understand their monthly cycle, their cyclical mm -hmm. rhythm, um, and the energetics of those four phases throughout each month so that they can harness that to support deep transformational healing. Mm -hmm. My cyclical rhythm is sacred ceremony. Um, yes. I help women find inner peace and that starts within it's an inside job um so i'm honored to do the work that i do it's been a long time coming and just recently opened up my coaching services so mm. I start sharing that medicine and bearing witness to other women who are ready to do that deep healing work and uh take their lives back so <laughs> so that's amazing uh i heard you said that was a journey for you to come here so what brought you to this place today? Ooh, <laughs> <Ready. laughs> like, where do I start? Um, I'll take us back to 2018. Um, and at that time I was feeling, I was really struggling with anxiety and depression. Mm. It totally colored my world. I was very disconnected from myself. I felt really just numb, um, with myself and with life. And I ended up entering a relationship that was not very healthy. I've learned a lot from that relationship. And I'm now, after I've kind of done a lot of the deep healing around it, at a place where I can be grateful for it. Um, but through that time, I allowed myself to lose track of myself even further. Um, was dealing with a lot of emotional abuse and verbal abuse and didn't know who I was and got really wrapped up in codependent patterns as well. And then I found ayahuasca and mm -hmm. my healing journey really started. And I started to understand how powerful those sacred medicines are and how much they're able to support you when you're really ready to go in and do that deep work and take mm -hmm. radical responsibility for everything that's happened in your life, the way that you're feeling and relating to your reality and to choose to be ready to heal and to face your shadows and the darkness and the uncomfortable places and allow it to be the that experience becomes your medicine um you heal you so my journey began with ayahuasca and uh throughout the last three and a half years i've been working closely with plant medicine and um just being devoted to my healing and integration from those journeys has become a way of life and so mm. throughout that, I started connecting with myself again and understanding my emotions. I like to call it emotional literacy. Um, it's actually being able to read my emotions, where they're showing up in my body, how they're affecting my thoughts, 
Mm -hmm. um, and knowing how to support myself through all of the different ways that that can show up. Mm -hmm. I also, um, about two and a half years ago, came off of hormonal birth control and mm -hmm. went on a whole other healing journey, um, you know, balancing my hormones and really starting to connect more at a somatic level because I realized I was still very numb and disconnected from my natural rhythm as a woman. Mm. And so going through that journey, I also discovered herbalism. And so over the last three and a half years, I've, I've healed mind, body, and spirit in so many ways. And seeing the power of that healing work has really inspired me to offer it to other women. Um, and it's been my heart's pull for a few years now. And so a year ago, I planted the seeds for starting my own business. And in mm. December, I hired a business mentor and oh. she was the perfect person for me to work with and helped me get my business off the ground. And um, really, she helps entrepreneurs who are wanting to create a soul-led, heart-centered business. Mm. So that's where I've been. And I launched within the last month and I'm ready to take on clients. And it's just... I'm deeply honored uh, to have taken the steps necessary to be ready to create that kind of space for other women. So mm -hmm. oh, that sounds <laughs> amazing. So there's many things that he already told us <laughs> that I'm so much, so more curious. And so I love he said like radical responsibility, talking about uh, working with plant medicine. Um, and that's, that's absolutely totally true. And I love you said it that way radical responsibility. I'm repeating it because that that's very important. That's really a big first step. Uh, I think I would say a first step is becoming aware of something. And probably the second big step will be radical responsibility. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like for any kind of deep work or transformation to happen, whether that's on your healing journey or a business you're creating or a relationship that you have it's like i like to think of it as there's three pillars first you have to have that awareness and you have mm -hmm. to be willing to do what it takes and you've got to show a bit of consistent devotion to that and that mm -hmm. requires us to take radical responsibility um mm -hmm. i had a journey a little over a year ago that was all about liberation and mm -hmm. i went the weekend with the intention of i want to leave feeling liberated and I had this expectation of what that was going to look like and that sitting with the medicine was going to leave me feeling so open and expansive mm -hmm. and just nothing could touch me. And mm -hmm. it actually, actually ended up being one of the most challenging weekends that I've ever had working with that medicine. And her message was liberation doesn't just happen. No one and nothing is going to save you. You're the one for the job. And liberation requires radical responsibility and full self-acceptance without any conditions or excuses. And that's really when your healing starts because you're no mm -hmm. longer outsourcing your power, your ability to feel good, and you realize that everything begins and ends with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so related to this inner journey, it's also like this journey of rediscovering your body as a woman, like your cycle and this like coming out of birth control and connecting with your body. So how was that journey more in depth? If yeah. You want to share? Yeah. I had, um, it was something I resisted for a long time. I was on hormonal birth control for five or six years mm -hmm. and I had met some women who had already kind of made that change and they kept telling me how awesome it was, but I was afraid, you know, there's, um, a big lack of proper education and empowerment for women in that space. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is just, here's this pill to fix your problem and make it go away. Um, but what we don't realize is that's actually creating more problems for most of us. It's creating a state of disharmony and interrupting our natural rhythm. So when I made that decision to come off of hormonal birth control and start healing, I had to come back to the basics um, and really focus on nurturing myself. So that was nutrition, like changing some of the things that I was eating to better support my body, um, remineralizing because it strips like a lot of pharmaceutical medications, but especially hormonal birth control strips our body of essential vitamins and minerals. Um, so I had to replenish those and 
Oops. and you get a lot more sleep. And um, in that time, I really learned gentleness and presence and patience with myself and my body uh, because I was able to see just how much my body was suffering. And um, pretty early on in that journey, I discovered herbalism and started just self-studying, reading some books about it, um, following Instagram pages, watching YouTube videos about women who were herbalists and realized that it was such a beautiful way, gentle yet powerful way to support your body into coming back into a state of harmony. Um, and just as a little side note here, I, I like to think of healing as restoring harmony, um, coming back into a state of balance. And so yeah. it was supported me in doing that. And I'm now at a point where, yes, I still have some things that I'm getting balanced, but I'm in a normal rhythm. I feel connected to my body. And I started recognizing that because we have four phases as women. Yeah. And I'm a, um, energy is different for each one. And they correlate with the seasons that we have um, in nature. And... I started to recognize as I was going through that journey and getting back into my natural rhythm and learning how to relate to it and use it, that it was like a ceremony every single month, just like mm -hmm. you have in medicine, but it's naturally paced and then mm -hmm. it's like a, a rhythm that feels mm -hmm. really good to your body. It's not rushing you. And I learned that there's a really good time to explore embodiment and really being the woman that you want to be and having fun. And like pushing up into your growth edges. And then there's a time for deep inward reflection and processing and doing shadow work. And then there's a time to set intentions and then a time to release and just receive. Um, and I, as I started using my monthly cycle as a ceremony, my healing catapulted in a whole other direction um, that has just changed my life because it, continue to play in that piece around liberation and radical responsibility, realizing mm -hmm. that I already have everything I need within to heal. And it was just a matter of tuning into that and harnessing it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a beautiful journey. And now I, I do my best to kind of align my life with my cycle. And that has brought in so much more ease and compassion and understanding. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for it. And I believe that all women deserve to be empowered with this information. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they feel called to do something with it, that's up to them. But I don't think we realize just how helpful we are in this gift we've been given. So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you probably know already that in many traditional tribes, even in Amazon like that, for for them, so for example, in not all the tribes, but for many of them, ayahuasca for just for the males because the women already had the menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the same I heard in many tribes that it, it was seen already as a ceremony, indeed, as you're saying. Um, so I would like, if you'd like to share more about the phases in the menstrual cycle. Yeah, I can. Um, so there's four phases. The start of a new cycle is the menstrual phase. So when you're bleeding, mm -hmm. um, and that's considered your inner winter season. So it's a time of affirmation, reflection, nurturing, um, and just allowing yourself to honor that time of deep release and renewal. And then after that is your follicular phase. It's your inner spring and your energy is starting to rise. The dominant hormone in that phase is estrogen. Um, so you're, you're starting to feel more like yourself. It's a really good time to explore the embodiment of the woman that you are continuing to become, have fun with it, start doing more social things, um, and really using the energy to serve you. And then it's all leading up to your ovulatory phase, which is actually the star of your cycle. A lot of women think it's actually the menstrual phase, but it's ovulation. So all of your hormones are building up to the ovulatory phase. And that is when your energy is at its highest. Um, you have multiple hormones that are peaking at that time. And this is a really good time. If you're living cyclically, you can use this to have a big social event, ask for the raise that you've been wanting to ask for, do job interviews, um, really harness that vibrant, inspired energy um, mm -hmm. to support you. And then after that, you enter your luteal phase, which is the last home run of the cycle 
and it's the inner fall or autumn. And this time we often feel a lot more deeply. Some of them will experience PMS symptoms, um, but it's just a time of deep feeling, reflection and processing. And for many women, it's about two weeks long. And typically I can separate it into two weeks. So the first week I'm feeling a lot. The second week I continue to feel, but I have a better understanding of what I'm actually processing at that time and set intentions for what I feel ready to release when I bleed again. Um, and so that's kind of how I use it monthly as a ceremony to support me understanding that there's a time to be really bright and social and playful and really focus on embodiment. And then there's a time to allow myself to go deep within um, and process what's weighing me down, set intentions and then release it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> That sounds amazing. I really love that. You know, I've always been uh, wondering about that to explore the menstrual cycle and how definitely you, we can feel differences in different phases and how to take advantage of these these waves or, as you said, even better, this ceremony that happens with us every month continuously. Um, so that's amazing that you're actually offering that to women to support mm -hmm. this a natural cycle that we have uh, for the best, right? And I would also like to ask, so um, how do you put in practical? Like, uh, do you have any practical uh, tips? Like, for example, I don't know, do you put in your calendar already all the phases so you know when someone's schedule or you schedule something, you already know pretty much more or less where you are or yeah, any so other tips? I <laughs> my calendar. Um, not as much as I used to when I was first learning about it. I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm tuned into the energy pretty well, so I can just feel where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, and I also use like, the fertility awareness method. So it's a way that you can track your cycle using vital signs. Um, so there's different things you can use like temperature, um, like cervical mucus. There, there's different things that you can pay attention to with your body that kind of key you in to this is where you're at in your cycle. Um, and as you start to learn about that, just some other practices um, that can help you really tune into that energy and learn to support yourself better are actually kind of like, I guess just practices or more like rituals that you can do with yourself. So dancing is a really good thing to explore as your energy shifts and just notice how it wants to come through. So in my follicular phase, I tend, which is our inner spring and energy is starting to rise. I tend to dance more playfully and upbeat. And in the ovulatory phase, it's like really upbeat. And sometimes it's more primal because there's just so much of that life force energy flowing through me. And then in the luteal phase, sometimes it's a lot more slow, or maybe I'm just kind of sitting on the ground and allowing myself to just flow with the energy. Uh, that's a really good way to tune in and movement helps you move energy in the body, mm -hmm. which helps process things, um, which is so important for all of us, but especially as women who are having this monthly cycle, we need to be really mindful of continuing to allow energy to move through us. And so it doesn't get stuck. Um, we'll start to feel heavy if we do that. So dance is a really good practice. Um, meditating and journaling, just kind of keeping track of, you know, if you're tracking your cycle with your calendar, you know, I'm in this phase of my cycle, I'm noticing these things. This is how I'm feeling. This is how I'm supporting myself so that you can start to see over time how your relationship shifts. Um, yeah, so that's just some basic things. And then Listen. Um, there's like nutritional things that you can do, but I feel like that's a much deeper conversation. Um, so really just practices that allow you to attune to your energy as it changes. Mm -hmm. um, so you can learn about yourself. Our wound is wise. And all we really need to do is tune in because she whispers to us mm. when you tune in, she'll talk very clearly to you. Once you get that channel open, she'll tell you, this is what's going on. This is what I need you to process. This is what I need from you. Um, mm. It's this beautiful channel of communication that we start to open. And um, it's been really cool to experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. I never thought to open that channel. We all... Um, we often think to open the channel with spirits, with higher dimension, but actually we have access of deep of wisdom inside of our body. That's true. Yeah. Our body is totally, it's more ancient than us and has a, a more ancient memory 
and wisdom than our mind has. Uh, and well, definitely the womb. I never thought about it, but like, yes, yes. <laughs> it makes yes. total like sense. Your heart too. You can talk yes. to the heart. Um, like our heart is wise. Our heart is like the seat of our higher self. And um, I like to say that wisdom is housed in the heart. Knowledge is housed in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like you can tune in to like these different parts of you um, and they speak to us. It's like all of the information that we receive, whether it's from our environment, other people, from spirit, it has to be processed in and through the body. Mm -hmm. So it's like tap into our centers and um, and continue learning and opening that channel that way. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so <laughs> coming back to the birth control. So what's the, what's the differences have you noticed? How, how was your connection with your body, with birth control? What, what would you, what did you feel or what would you say birth control, like, uh, mm, did not allow to happen? Mm. So I'd say the biggest one, um, there've been many shifts, but the biggest one has been actually feeling connected to my femininity and my feminine essence. Um, it was this weird thing that I was experiencing when I was on the birth control and when I had first come off of it, I felt very masculine and very manly. And from the outside looking in, no one would have thought that about me um, or felt that energy for me, but I felt very manly. I didn't feel feminine. I didn't feel beautiful. I felt very numb and kind of like heavy and um, very logical. There wasn't a lot of flow and ease in my relationship with myself or even my life. Um, and so that's been a huge shift is actually feeling more embodied and connected to my feminine energy. Um, and I definitely, it's allowed me to find a better balance between the masculine and the feminine within me, uh, because that part of me can actually flow now. So that's been one of the biggest changes that I've experienced. Um, the other thing was that numbness that I was experiencing within myself, feeling really numb and disconnected. And the way that we feel internally is going to reflect in our environment and the way that we perceive reality. Um, and so it really helped me to heal that, that numbness and that disconnect that was still, even as I had been doing work with plant medicine, I'd kept finding myself in these deep waves of anxiety and depression because I wasn't connected to my truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those are really the big shifts, like overarching shifts that I noticed on, um, like a, a deeper level. There were, I was having a lot of digestive issues, um, which can affect directly your mental health and your immune health. Like 80% of your immune system is housed in your gut, um, and hormonal birth control affects gut health. Um, so that was a huge shift was getting that back into alignment, um, and just feeling better a better relationship with food. You know, I was able to enjoy it more and actually sense what felt good for me to eat and what didn't. Um, I started sleeping better, you know? Um, yeah, I just overall noticed that my physical body and my energy and mental and emotional health all started to improve, um, which completely changed the way that I interacted with life. It was a newfound sense of hope, mm. um, like this piece that I'd been missing that I didn't understand was missing because all I'd been told about hormonal birth control is that this helps you, you know, this is supposed to fix you and make things better, but it was actually making things worse. But I was told that that was the solution. I didn't know anything outside of that. So it was like opening Pandora's box. <laughs> I started to yeah. learn about it um, and realize just how, how much I was missing out on. So... So what made you find out or, or somehow start thinking to maybe whatever issue you were having or that maybe you didn't want that birth control and wanted to go back to your natural cycle? Mm. So it was probably two years before I made the decision to come off of it, um, where I was talking with a few women who had made that, that change. And I just remember them being like, that's not good for you. Like, you should really consider coming off of it. And that, that's kind of all they left it at. And I also wasn't open to really hearing why at the time. Um, and then 
I actually had to stop taking it for a weekend that I was working with ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And um, I just decided something intuitively came through me. It was like, don't start taking it again. And so I decided to listen to that. It was, um, honestly, it was spirit led. <laughs> it, it was just, I was told like, it's time you've already stopped it. Just keep the ball rolling. And then I started to have a lot of symptoms coming off of it and go, what is this? Um, and then I, a medical friend of mine who practiced herbalism and knew a bit about how our birth control, how it affected you and coming off of it. And she loaned me a book called Beyond mm -hmm. Football by Dr. Jolene Brighton. And I learned so much reading that book about the ways that hormonal birth control works in our body. And if you're going to come off of it, how to support yourself, how to recognize imbalances and to start healing and restoring harmony. And it lit a fire inside of me. And mm -hmm. the rest is history. And birth box was open at that point and I was hungry for more information and just kept seeking it out and learning. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And then, so, and how do you relate all this work with the uh, inner peace with mm -hmm. your, yeah, your coaching yeah. work? So I think a lot of us hear the term mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. you know, it's a healing work and it's very true. And so for me, it was the, the body part of it and the somatic part of it. I was feeling very disconnected in this vessel that I have, that I was experiencing life through and processing life and information from spirit through was not in a state of harmony. Um, it was, my body was very uncomfortable. It didn't feel safe. I felt disconnected from it. I didn't fully love myself because I felt so disconnected. Um, so the way that it's related to inner peace for me and that I've seen it relate to other people is you start to feel more grounded. We experience this life, this human life through our body, our physical vessel. And so connecting with this part of me and getting grounded and learning how to support myself has fostered this deep relationship with love. And as I've gone through this journey of healing, it's required me to really practice patience and compassion and being really gracious with myself uh, because it's really easy when you're not feeling good to want to dip into the realms of victimhood and feeling disempowered and mm -hmm. like frustrated or angry um and i experienced all of those things it was part of my process but it was a catalyst for me to do all that deep healing work of victim consciousness and working through anger and frustration and this empowerment ended a huge part of my journey and it gave me a daily reminder and opportunity to practice the lessons that I was being asked to learn. Um, and so whenever I'm not feeling peaceful and disconnected, it's often because I'm not taking the time that I need to honor myself. Whether that's, you know, working on my neck and shoulders, if I'm feeling really tense or taking some time to sit down and meditate or stretch or go for a walk, whatever it is, whenever I'm feeling a little wild and crazy, <laughs> And I don't feel peaceful and rounded, I come back to the body. And when this part of you feels safe and grounded, then I'm able to actually address what's going on um, in mm -hmm. my head. Um, so it's been really just a tether for me. And connecting to that and learning how to work with that has really helped me come home to empowerment. So, mm. yeah. so it sounds like. What I hear is like a big piece of your work is really this reconne reconnection with the body and really use this, this vessel the best mm -hmm. way possible to yes. be able to find that inner peace, empowerment, all that, that we want in life yeah. through, through this vessel of the body. Yes. Yeah. Strengthening the body and look that way, get the strength in the lines. A lot of healing work is in and through the body. Mm -hmm. We have memories and experiences and these stories that we tell ourselves and these patterns that we're in and that does need to be addressed at like the mental emotional level um but we also store memories and trauma and experiences in the tissues in our body um yeah and so it's really at the end of the day it's about healing again so we're storing harmony um 
the body is a key player in that. So I think, yeah, absolutely. Mm, that's beautiful. So, so we really, we talk about the women's cycle, the inner peace. How else do you support women? Mm. So I can share a little bit more about the different modalities that we, mm. that I use. Um, yes. so one of the big ones is timeline healing. Nice. Um, so I feel that this is important to share part of my reason for creating this offer that the framework is based around the physical body and the monthly cycle is because not everyone wants to work with plant medicine. Not everyone feels ready and some people aren't be with you. And, um, so I've taken a lot of the things that I've learned from doing my own work with plant medicine and also facilitating in that space into a space without plant medicine. And part of that is timeline healing. So when I say that, I mean, healing the past and healing our anxiety and worry of the future so that we can live more of our life in the present moment. And I had someone ask me recently, what do you think is a good balance between the time you spend in the past, present, and future. And it was an interesting question because it made me think about we can't spend 100% of our time in the present as much as we may want to. And so how do we start to change our relationship with past and future to serve us? You know, instead of ruminating on the past of what we didn't do right and how oh, hurt we are by it, can we start to develop the skills and change our relationship with it so that we can visit it to process the pain that's still weighing us down and alchemize that into powerful wisdom that supports us now and moving into the future. It's like we visit the past in order to heal or to reflect on beautiful memories to remind ourselves of all of the wonderful things that have happened in our lives. And then healing anxiety of the future and coming home to trust of the divine unfolding and that you'll always hold and it's going to be okay no matter what comes up. And being excited about the future, but also not living so much for that, that you can't be sure now. And so feeling that timeline so that you can come into this moment and whatever is present, feel empowered with the skills and the tools to walk yourself through whatever comes up um, and to, to just fully be here now and not pull in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big piece of the work that I do. And again, that happens through the body oftentimes. Um, so it's tying in the ceremonial aspect of the monthly cycle, um, just helping them do that healing. And then somatic embodiment is another part of it. Um, so that ties in with the, the cyclical living and um, just helping women tune in some energy work practices they can do to clear their energy, to ground, mm -hmm. to protect themselves. Um, when I was doing the market research for this offer, I wasn't surprised, but also was, I guess, a bit amazed to see just how many people often can tell that they're picking up on energy, but they have a really hard time discerning. Is it mine? Mm -hmm. Is it someone else's? If it is, where is it coming from? And feeling scared by that, scared of it, because they didn't know, one, how to recognize it, two, how to clear it from their system, and three, how to protect themselves. And um, so that's another piece of the somatic embodiment is kind of energetic hygiene um, mm -hmm. and literacy of understanding that and feeling empowered to show up fully as you are and to be able to be in the space with other people, maybe with big energies, um, and to know that you are able to hold yourself to that. Um, so there's kind of a theme here that I mm -hmm. brushed over of like, it really is about sovereignty and personal yeah. empowerment and that radical responsibility piece. So it's, it's more inward focused, mm -hmm. you know, realizing how much we are projecting outwards and looking outward. And that definitely affects us, but it's there to teach you um, and ask you to turn it in. Um, and when we can recognize that, you know, we are the creator of our reality um, and go within for the answers, life changes. So yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, like sovereignty, empowerment, and radical responsibility. 
Um, also, like, it's interesting you say, I definitely had the experience as well of uh, absorbing or feeling other people's energies and all that, or thoughts sometimes. And I always notice, at least now I'm talking about myself, that while I'm in ceremony, I know this happens. So I am more tuned into this fact. And so when I feel any, I'm just openly want question what it's coming from and feeling what it's coming from. But it's true that in real life, and then I forget that this is actually something that happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we definitely are not taught in school about this. Actually, the other way around, like it's definitely, it's not any, it's not rational, even though it is actually uh, true, but it's not rational. So our logic mind just reject that truth. And so we are just, well, I don't know other, but definitely I point the finger to towards me. Oh, I'm feeling this way. Or like, I feel this anxiety instead of where it is, this is coming from. Like, oh, why I'm still I have anxiety, for example. Right. Uh, so what would be a way or how do you guide someone to discern or how do you do actually, how do you discern if it's yeah. where it's coming from? So I'll take a moment to pause and check in. Awareness is a piece of that, of recognizing, well, I'm feeling, feeling a little bit off. Um, so one of the things that I do, if I know I'm going into an environment where there's going to be a lot of people, or maybe I know that there's going to be some energy in the space that may feel intense for me, mm -hmm. I, I take some time to meditate, even if it's just a few minutes, take a few deep breaths and imagine myself in a bubble of white light. It's a really easy way to kind of put up a field of protection for yourself. And then if you notice, like, let's say you're someone who notices every time you go into an environment that you just feel bombarded by energy, but you haven't started to discern if it's yours or not. And so you just take it all on as your own to check in with yourself before you leave the house or get out of your car and enter that space. How am I feeling? Like three things, tangible things. This is, this is how I'm feeling physically. These are the thoughts that I'm noticing have. This is what I'm and maybe you're feeling really good or maybe you're struggling and get really clear on what those things are for you. So you have a point of reference. And then when you go into that environment, if you start feeling different energy or you have these thoughts that don't feel good, you can recognize, okay, I wasn't feeling that way before I came in here. That's not mine. Um, so having that point of reference can be really, really helpful for you starting to learn um, when it is and it's not yours. And then, like you said, you can ask questions and you may not get answers immediately, but the more that you practice that, mm -hmm. uh, you'll start to notice you'll get answers and kind of little pings of like, oh, maybe it's coming from over there, or this is where it's showing up in my body and, and just breathing into that space and imagining that it's being released. And you can, it can be as simple as that's not mine, I release it. Um, mm -hmm. So things like that can be really helpful. Um, but ultimately, you know, when I first started learning about that, um, I was really afraid of other energies and kind of at times maybe afraid of other people. Mm. And I've always been someone who's been super sensitive to the energy of people and of spaces. Um, I remember being a very young child and picking up on that, but I had no idea what it was. And so it often felt really scary and I numbed out and shut that part of me down. And as I've done on my healing journey, I've had to learn to reconnect with that, um, mm. and build that relationship and create safety. And at first I was like villainizing like any energy that felt like it was coming into my field. I was like, no, that's bad. And I was so afraid, but I've got to a point now where I realized that yes, I may pick up on other energies sometimes and it may feel really uncomfortable, but it's always there to teach me something. Even if it's not my energy and I'm picking up on it, if it's bringing something up within me and I'm feeling really activated or triggered, there's something there for me. So while I'm in that space with that energy and that person may not be the right time to sit with it, but I'll always circle back to it later and get really curious about, okay, what was that? Where did it show up for me? How did it show up? Why did it feel so uncomfortable? And it almost always is rooted back somewhere in childhood. And so mm -hmm. I meet with that part of myself and just speak to her, give her space to tell me what she's feeling, what she needs, and offer her words of reassurance. Um, 
Because ultimately with anything, with energy, yes, it's about empowerment and awareness, but really it's about creating safety and trust within yourself that I'm okay, whatever comes up, like I have the ability to walk myself through it, even if it feels really intense. Um, so yeah, just if you're, if someone's new getting started with this, imagine yourself in a bubble of white light and then before you go into spaces where you know that you're going to be around a lot of people, just take a moment to pause and list three things that help you pinpoint this is where I'm at right now so that you can undoubtedly know when something else is coming in. Yeah. That's very useful tips. I love it. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. All right. And so about <laughs> I'm like I think you already said so many beautiful things. I'm like, it's so satisfying to hear everything you said. And I'm like, that's so beautiful. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're so wise. You've been doing such amazing work and inner work and healing. And you're really in such a great place of so much knowledge and wisdom. So I'm really grateful you're, you are came here to this podcast and also that you are now sharing this work with other women to support other women. And I'm really fascinating about the, um, your work, uh, your approach on the menstrual cycle and really be able to serve this, our natural cycle, natural waves, like really using what we have, what, what has been given to us, this gift of this body at this vessel to be able to navigate through our soul journey on earth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just that it is a journey. <laughs> yes. To any woman who would be interested to work with you or to do this kind of work, like um, someone who's maybe on birth control or so that someone who's looking for inner peace, uh, who feels really disconnecting from their body and so on. Uh, I missed the first part of that. Did you say, what would I say to, to a woman? Uh, to a woman who wants to do, uh, to like work with you or, or do a similar work that you are offering. So um, someone who wants maybe to get out of birth control or maybe it's not on birth control, but wants to reconnect with her natural cycle or the feeling really disconnected with their body. So what will be the first steps that you would suggest mm. anyone? Really the first step and most important step is to tune in, be fully honest with yourself if you're ready to do things differently, to step onto a new path and to be in a place of discomfort. Um, but knowing that you're safe in that discomfort because that's a huge decision to make. You know, really going in and doing that deep transformational feeling work and taking full responsibility for yourself in your life is not for the feet of heart, but it is worth it. It's like if you are at a place where you're ready to face that and step into that and do what it takes to hold yourself through it all, then you're ready. And I think that's really the most important piece if you're thinking about it is to know that you are fully ready to hold yourself through it because there are going to be triumphs and there are going to be challenges um to know that you're really ready to devote yourself to that journey and mm -hmm. if you know within you are and um you're ready then it's a matter of just stepping in and if that's working with me or with someone else if you'll know your heart will tell you um and just start practicing that trust and opening it up to you you know what do i need next they send me someone to work with and um, if they wanted to work with me and I do discovery calls or interest calls in the free um, mm -hmm. chat about what you're moving through. What are you wanting to see and prove? There's this question that um, I actually got from my mom, but I think I hand you a magic wand, but mm -hmm. you hope to believe in the force set us working together. You know, uh, like dream big. Um, and through that process of discovering, you know, if it's a good fit and if I'm able to support, then we move forward. It's like I'm, it's something that's really important to me inside of my companions is integrity. Um, so I'm not meant to support everyone and help everyone. I'm also not able to support everybody. 
Um, so I really vet the women that I'm meant to work with and make sure that it is aligned. Like the to refer to as like soulmate clients, like we are meant to work together. Our past went to boss. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right now my offering is three months long. Um, and you meet every single week and there's resources and worksheets and uh, trainings along the way to support a, a journey of uh, deep transformational healing. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to that initial commitment of being certain that you're ready to step up to the plate um, and heal. It's a hero's journey. <laughs> so, so yeah. So what would be, because, so it, it's, as I said, take radical responsibility. It's, um, it, it requires work. So what would be like, I put myself into the mind of someone say, okay, I have to put myself into all that. What would be the benefits? I know you said like you're a matching wound. So whatever is that you want, but in general, what would be like a ideal outcome or oh, how's life on the other side? <laughs> yeah, a lot more peaceful, <laughs> but a lot more peaceful and calm and, um, trust in yourself. Like that was another common thing that I saw from that and Mark research that I also used to experience a lot was I was really afraid to go into certain parts of my thoughts or my mind because like, I didn't know what I was going to find. And I was scared that I would get stuck there. Um, mm -hmm. so trust in yourself that you got you and you'll have someone else supporting you, you know, to make sure that you were guided safely through that process, but trust in yourself, belief in yourself. Um, I like to say, you know, coming home to the sacredness of life and the sweetness within your heart, connecting with a sense of love for yourself, for other people in your life, feeling more connected in general, more inspired or grounded genuinely being excited about life and enjoying life and excited for the future so it was also a place that i was in before i really started this journey is you know i'm pretty young i'm 24 mm -hmm. um, and i remember at like 20, 21 that i was I mean, having like these freak outs and these moments of breaking down of like i don't know that i can do another two years like this like i was not looking forward to the future i was um afraid of it and dreading it and so on the other side, like, I'm so excited to live to be an old woman. <laughs> like, I'm so excited at the lives ahead. And that's a really good feeling. And I enjoy my life now. So it's just like when you start to feel that way about yourself in your life, everything changes. You relate to everything so differently. It's all so precious and safely. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it really is coming home to that inner peace. And that's mm -hmm. actually part of your life. And it can be hard to understand that or conceptualize that. If maybe you've never experienced that or you've been disconnected for a long time, but having people in your life that can kind of be a way shower and help light the path ahead for you and show you what's possible is important um, to know that you're not alone that journey. And mm -hmm. you can see, like, I may not understand it, but I can see that that's possible and I want that for myself. And at the end of the day, more energy that you feel. It's like you resonate at a different level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the support is always very important because, you know, like we have around us often the, what is the society, what is the common or mainstream thoughts are really different than what actually is our inner reality and what actually is can be possible. So it's so important to have someone next to you, a coach, uh, even better because the coach, they have their tool to really support you. But even like people that are, that vibrate on the same level, or understand or are on the same journey so that you can support each other to be able to, to go where you want or to, to be able to reconnect with yourself. <laughs> yeah. And you're so young. We're, I'm even more impressed. I did remember you were so young, but like, <laughs> but like, and like, you have so much wisdom and knowledge. Like, yeah, maybe I did not remember that right. <laughs> yeah. Old soul, maybe it's uh, old soul for sure. Old soul. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with the Akashic records? Mm -hmm. 
So my first Akashic Records reading, I asked how many lifetimes has my soul lived? And they were like, well, your soul, the one I had the reading with, they're like, your soul has spent your time split between birth and some other planet. And they, like, they used the wording in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> yeah. um, and that on Earth, that this is the Earth lifetime 444. 444? So, yeah. So oh. my soul's been on Earth a lot, and I'm grateful to have you know, found this path and been willing to devote myself to this journey over the last four years. Um, so I started working with plant medicine in 2018, but I didn't start using ceremony until 2019 mm -hmm. to 2020. Um, but it's become it's such a big part of my life now. So I'm grateful to have found it at such a young age because it's like, now I'm excited about all the life that I have ahead of me. And, uh, you know, it's just going to keep getting better since then. Mm -hmm. For that, so absolutely, yeah. So, would you like to share some last words? Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to share just kind of like my heart's vision for sure for this humanity, like what I would like to see. Mm -hmm. I would really just love to see everybody kind of come back to our hearts and remember that this life gets to be sweet. And that the pain and the suffering that we experience are ultimately our greatest teachers. And to surrender to that process. And um, I just come home to a remembrance that we do get to enjoy this life. And it does get to be beautiful. And that there's so much love that exists within each and every one of us, no matter how disconnected you feel from it. And that you deserve, it is your birthright to remember that and experience that. Mm -hmm. I just I I wish that everyone would get to experience that and taste that in this lifetime. Uh because it's all the idea to each other one of us. So I know like collectively we're moving in that direction. It mm -hmm. can be about why, but um it's really my mission in this life is to help more people remember that and experience that and the life that they have left. Mm. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being in this podcast. Thank you for everything you shared. Uh, thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for the amazing work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone who's listening. Uh, and so where they can find you? Uh, so my Instagram is my uh, main business page. It's at jolie.drill. And uh, so you can give me a follow. My offer is listed on there. Um, you can also book an uh, interest call at the link in my bio for my offer, which is Reclaim Your Radiance. It's a three-month container. Um, so you can connect me over there. Feel free to direct message me with any questions or curiosities that you have. I would love to connect. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, again for listening. You can follow Harmoniously Podcast and on Spotify, Amazon, Google, anywhere. And thank you again.